Okay, so it is now time to talk about Apex testing. Before we go into the nitty gritty on how to perform Apex tests, we need to know why. The why behind Apex testing. So why in the world do we have to write Apex unit tests? The short answer is quality. Quality is very important. So when you write a code, a piece of code, you would want to make sure that this piece of code will not break. Okay? So imagine you are in charge of developing something for a Salesforce org that is being used by 5,000 employees or staff, okay? And they have 50 million records, for example. Maybe it's being used by a government or any kind of organization. So you write a piece of code and on their platform, there are hundreds more of other codes, other applications, components, processes, everything. So everything is entangled together, right? Meaning one process can trigger another process, can cause a a series of chain reaction. So when you deploy your code, it might touch or affect other codes or other applications written also by you or any other developers, but it's already deployed within the Salesforce org. All right. So the test makes sure that these codes will not conflict with each other will not cause another application to break when yours are being used or deployed will not cause an error on other other piece of codes other processes other applications and that's the main reason on why we have to do unit tests on every Apex code that we are going to deploy on the live Salesforce org, on the live production Salesforce org. You cannot write a piece of code on the production org. As they also already mentioned here, here, where was it? Apex code can only be written in a sandbox environment or a developer org. Now we have Trailhead Playground, right? Our Trailhead Playground that we see here, these are developer orgs. These are not real production orgs. Therefore, we can write code on our playground because it's a developer org. Now, if you want to deploy a piece of code onto a, a live production org, the actual Salesforce instance that's being used by the organization itself, the thousands of staff are actually working on live data, real customers' data, real contacts, real accounts. You can't write Apex codes on those live organizations, um, those live Salesforce orgs. You can, uh, you can um, create processes using process builders you can create um, flows but you cannot deploy a custom apex code such as classes or triggers or or any custom code that writes lines of codes you can't do that on an active org let me give you an example i'm going to flip to my um an org that, that i am in charge of but I will blur out the URL so you don't see what org that is. I'm going to flip this back. So 
here if I go file and I hit new apex class right or anything and I see blah class whatever right and it will say oh that's even wrong so I'm gonna go file <laughs> new apex class blah class for example all right it's gonna say cannot create apex class on an active organization an active salesforce org because this is a real org you can't even create a trigger you can't create anything here they don't allow it okay so for example if i do a test on account and submit cannot create apex trigger on an active organization you can view so if I open resource here and I'm just gonna type event, this is one of the Apex class I wrote. So let's do event class, event check-in. This is a Visual Force page. Let's do event um, check-in Apex class here. Say I wanna, I can see the code, right? I can see the code. And then I wanna, I wanna add anything. You cannot edit anything here. Cannot edit anything here so this is a star right you try to save it and it's gonna say cannot alter metadata in an active org so basically you can't write anything on a live production org you are not allowed to salesforce will not have that no sorry you are not allowed why because we care highly about quality, okay? It's all about ensuring that your Apex classes and triggers work as expected, having a suite of regression tests that can be rerun every time classes and triggers are updated to ensure that future updates you make to your app don't break existing functionality. It won't break any other code okay so quality is very important meeting the code coverage requirements for deploying apex to production or distributing apex to consumers via packages so you also have to make sure all the piece of codes you are writing are actually going to be tested so you can put um inefficient codes there that they don't even run when when a real life situation happens you have a big chunk of code that doesn't even run. It never got run. So Apex test ensure that every piece of code you wrote has a scenario, a real world business scenario that will actually run those line of codes that will always get used. Not always, but will eventually get used. All right. So we don't want a wasted line of code that's never been uh, never going to be executed anyways. We don't want to have those. So we all also want to ensure high quality apps delivered to the production org, which makes production users more productive. They don't get uh, hung up with errors here and there. Everything is bro bro broken or breaking here and there. Okay. High quality apps delivered to package subscribers. If you are a developer and you create your own apps and you have subscribers organizations that that's buying or using your apps all right you can keep delivering high quality packages that will not break other stuff they have so your customers will have trust high trust so in your applications in this way Salesforce is really, really helping us developers in making sure we are delivering high quality products, high quality applications to whoever is using our piece of code, whether it's internal organization that we are working for or other organizations that purchase and buys our apps. Make sure it won't break. It's really resilient, really stable, really scalable. You know, even if they process 5 million records through it, it's still going to be fine. So you can test all kinds of possible scenarios, right? That's why 
Apex testing is extremely important in the development life cycle of a Salesforce application. Okay, you can't just build a Apex test just to pass the test. Don't do that. Don't just build an Apex test just to pass the test so you can deploy it, but you have to actually think of every possible scenario. Will this break? Will that break? You have to test it out and make sure you, you deliver a very solid application, all right? So now we can get into the nitty gritty part of the test, all right? So this is the syntax. When you create a class, a test class, you, you start with add is test, and then you define however you want to define the class. It's a static returning void and a test name, and then you do your codes here, okay? Alternatively, a test method can have this syntax, static test method void, okay? So, and then the test name, so you, you, you put test method there. Using each test annotation instead of a test method keyword is more flexible as you can specify parameters in the annotation. Well, we'll cover one such parameter later, okay? Basically, uh, that's how you create uh, a test class, the shell of it, okay? This is a private class, and then you define is test here, and then this is the method, which is my test. Is test static method, my test is the method name, and then you define your code. So this is already getting into the coding part, okay? So this is an example, unit test example. The test, test the temperature converter class, okay? Let's create this together, okay? So I'm gonna cut this video here so it's not going to be too long and I'll see you on the next video where, where we actually is going to um, play with the code and start testing and then another video that we will also do the challenge here together, the hands-on challenge, okay? So I'll see you on the next video. I'll get ready here. So this is where we're gonna start on the next video. We're just gonna start coding test units and I'll see you there. Boom, hit that subscribe button and explore new trailhead grounds and learn to implement the most useful and popular apps on the Salesforce app exchange. And do yourself a favor, like this video and you'll be surprised on how much more you understand when watching this same video after liking it. Don't take my word, watch this one more time after you like the video and see it for yourself. Bada bing, bada boom.